Howdy folks, I'm going to do a couple of videos on beginner flying, uh, how to set up your Bixler 3, this is a Bixler 2, I haven't got a Bixler 3, um, and things like that, mainly for my nephew Harry, g'day Harry, how you going? Harry has decided he wants to learn how to fly and he's bought himself a Bixler 3 and a Turnergy i6 radio, um, which is a great choice for a beginner and for advanced as well. All right, so I've got a Bixler 2. This is the first plane I ever bought. It's about three years old and I absolutely love it still now and it taught me to fly. So the Bix 3 is pretty similar. Um, got a few little different features, I think. Uh, now, if anyone else wants to um, leave a comment with some advice for Harry or other beginners, how to set up the Bix 3, how to start flying, that would be most useful. Please, please. Uh, join in the conversation. The number one tip, I reckon, because it happened to me within 30 seconds of my first flight, is to make sure the prop nut is done up tight. Uh, it's very disappointing when I flew mine. I was very, very excited. I got it up in the air and then suddenly lost all power. The prop nut had come, up, come off. I lost the prop, lost the prop nut. Couldn't fly for another week or so until I got replacements. So make sure the prop nut is done up tight. Now, the prop has to be facing forward as well. There might be numbers on the front of the prop. They always face to the front of the plane, whether the motor's on the front of the plane or it's a pusher set up like this. Now, I've asked my friend Michael, who's got a Bix 3, um, and he's given me some advice as well. Uh, other people have said this too, and I, I think it's right. When you're first starting off, don't worry about the wheels. Don't fit the wheels. Just hand launch it to start off with. It's a lot easier. Uh, and I think to use the wheels, you need really, really smooth grass or a, a hard road to take off on. And you'll probably be on uh, loose dirt or um, grass or something like that. So forget the wheels to start off with. You can use them later on when you've learned how to fly. It'll make things a lot easier. All right, another thing, uh, the push rods go from the servo and connect up to the ailerons and elevator and rudder. Now they've got little plastic connectors there. Make sure they are clipped on and it's even a good idea to put a, a zip tie or a bit of tape around the connectors, the clevis connectors, just to make sure they don't pop open. Uh, because if they pop open, you lose control of that control surface. If it came disconnected on the elevator, you're in trouble, it's gonna crash. You are gonna crash early and often, don't worry about that. You just have to learn to um, repair the plane and get on flying. Everyone crashes, it's part of, the, part of the fun. You can see my old Bixler 2, I've taped up the nose, I've crashed badly and split that open. Um, I've got tape along the leading edge of the wing. A lot of people do that. That's a good idea. That Scotch Tough Tape that I talked about is the best stuff of the lot. It's a bit expensive, but um, it's really, really sticky, a little bit flexible and quite tough. So yeah, you can put some along the leading ed edge of the wing if you want to. Uh, the Bix 3 and the Bix 2 come with uh, flaps as an option. Forget about them to start off with. You don't need them. In fact, I've just taped the flaps and ailerons together, so I've got really big ailerons. Now that makes it nice and aerobatic. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that to start off with. Just stick with the ailerons. Later on, when you can fly, you can muck around with the flaps. You'll have to put a couple more servos in there as well. Now, probably the most important thing is to get the center of gravity correct. Now, the center of gravity is the point around which the plane balances. And it's usually about a third of the way back on the wing from the leading edge. And that's often where the main spar goes through the, through the wing. Uh, I'm not too sure what it is for the BIX-3. If someone can help us and tell us what the measurement from the leading edge to the uh, center of gravity point, please leave that in the, in the comments. That would be very, very helpful. Um, so what you do is you, you find out where that point, that center of gravity point is and you can put a mark on the underneath of the wing, or I put a little dob of hot glue. Put your fingers on those two marks, and just make sure that the plane balances at that point. If it goes down like that, 
If the, nose, if the tail goes down, then it's tail heavy and there is no way you'll be able to fly the plane. Very tail heavy. If it goes nose down like that, that's not so bad. That's nose heavy and it's probably a good idea to be a little bit nose heavy when you first start out. Uh, but eventually you'll find the right spot for the plane to balance. And without the wheels, you may have to actually have to add a little bit more weight into the nose. Something like a, a 60 gram uh, fishing sinker in the nose there, just to get that balancing at the right point. And that's with the battery in position. I've got a battery? Yeah, I've got a battery in there. Yeah. So there's the battery. That's the same sort of battery that I've recommended for you, Harry. Um, so that goes right up in the nose. Then you check the center of gravity, make sure it's balancing at the right point. You can move the battery backwards or forwards if you want to, but you'll probably have to add that ex extra weight into the nose before you go flying. That's very important. Now you also have to make sure that the ailerons and the elevator and the rudder are all moving in the right direction. Uh, and the right direction for them is stand behind the plane with your radio. If you push the aileron stick to the right, the right aileron should go up and the left aileron should go down. If you push it to the left, left will go up, right will go down. Make sure they're the right way around, double check it. That's the most common way to crash when you first start off. And I've done it myself many times. Now the elevator, when you push, pull back on the elevator stick, the elevator should go up. If you think of it like a, a joystick in a plane, you pull back to make the plane go up, you push forward to make the plane go down. The rudder, starting off, you can actually forget about the rudder. Um, that's just another complication. You can sort of learn how to use it later on. But with the rudder, that's on the left stick, push to the right, rudder should go to the right. Push to the left, rudder should go to the left. So you've got to make sure all of them are going in the right direction before you fly for the first time. Now there are uh, recommended throws or how much movement you get for each of these control surfaces. Um, and if someone can recommend those uh, throws for a beginner, that would be very helpful too. You can increase or decrease the throws by moving the push rod. If you move it down on the servo, you'll get less movement of the aileron. If you move it up on the servo, you'll get more movement. And the opposite is true for the control horn. If you move it down on the control horn, you'll get more movement. If you move it up on the control horn, you get less movement. You really don't need much at all when you're first starting off. You only need large throws if you want to do radical aerobatics or things like that. <clears throat> so, very little movement uh, of the control surface. The same for the elevator, same for the rudder. Now let's talk about your first launch. Uh, and that's going to be pretty scary. You've had a little bit of experience with me that day that we all flew together. That was a very windy day. You did very well, so I think you've got um, the, 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 right, uh, the right skills to start off anyway. I think you'll learn a lot quicker than I did. The main important thing is to pick a day when there's no wind. That will make life a lot easier. If there's any wind, that's going to complicate things no end and you're going to crash a lot quicker. So a calm day will make things a lot, lot easier. There's always a little bit of wind. So when you're launching, you've got to launch straight into the wind. And when you're landing, you're best to come in uh, into the wind as well. And that sort of slows things down and gets the plane flying a lot quicker. To start off with, it will be better to get someone else to throw the plane for you. Um, get Charlie or Dad or Mum or Billy to um, launch the plane for you. And the way you do it, <coughs> you've got your uh, radio control in your hands. Uh, you put the throttle up to about three quarters, so it's revving a fair bit. You've got your hand on the elevator and aileron stick, and you've got to be ready to pull back on the elevator to get the plane to, to stay up, because these things tend to dip a little bit when they first start off. So get ready to pull back on the elevator. And the person throwing needs to give it a, a, a good hard throw and up at an angle of about 30 degrees. Throw as hard as they can and up. 
and then you're in control, and that's the way to do it. If you just throw it gently, horizontally, the plane's gonna dip down and hit the ground. So, but if they give a, a good hard throw up at 30 degrees with you on about three quarter throttle, you'll be fine. And then you get it up in the air a fair way. They say, get it up three mistakes, which means you can make a mistake and recover, you make another mistake and recover, make another mistake and recover, that level of height. So you need to get it up a fair way before you start trying to do turns and things like that. And it's probably a good idea, first off, just to get someone to, without the throttle on, just get someone to throw the plane and you control it in a glide uh, and get it to land nice and smoothly. And this, this plane, or the BIX-3, will glide for quite a way. So do a couple of throw, throws to start off with. That'll tell you whether the centre of gravity is right. If it's ra all radical and all over the place, then you might need more nose weight. If it's going straight down into the ground, you might need a bit less nose weight. Make sure you've got a nice big wide open space. Um, I prefer f a footy field size, and it's even better to have a footy field with no trees around it. So try and find somewhere without anything you can stack into for the first, f first flights. Now once you get up in the air, you can back off the throttle a bit so you're not going so fast, and you can fly around it about half throttle nicely. You can even turn the throttle off and just let it glide down. In fact, that's a good thing to do. Get it up high, chop the throttle back, and then just glide it back down to the ground and you'll learn how to fly without the panic of going really, really fast. And the best idea is to try and keep it flying out in front of you, uh, up into the wind. If you let it fly around behind you and there's any wind, it's gonna go way back behind you too quickly and you'll lose control. Uh, we experienced a bit of that, you'll remember, uh, a couple of years ago when we, when we did a bit of flying down here. Same sort of thing. Keep it out in front of you. Try and, if you're going to do circles, keep the circles out in front of you all the time until you learn how to fly a bit better. Something else very important to consider is your LiPo batteries. You really do have to look after LiPo batteries. Um, if you run them down to uh, fully flat, you won't be able to charge them up again and you'll have to throw them out. Fully charged, these are about 12.6 volts. When they get down to about 11.1 uh, volts, that's the time you need to stop using it and recharge it. To keep a check on that, you need to buy yourself a little uh, battery alarm or a smart battery meter. These are three or four dollars on eBay. These are five or six dollars on eBay. Got to get one. So what you do with this little battery alarm, you connect it to the, the balance port here. Once you work out the correct way and that will show you uh, the total voltage and the voltage of each, each different cell and it will uh, give you an alarm when it drops down below um, a certain level. It's usually set at about 3.3 volts per cell. That would give you a lot lower voltage than what I said, the 11.1 .1 volts, but when you're flying the voltage actually, and, and the battery's being drained, uh, the voltage actually dips down below uh, and you wouldn't want it while you're flying to dip below the 3.3 volts per cell. When you land it and check it, the voltage will be back up again and the time to change your battery, as I said, is when um, the total voltage is around 11.1 .1 volts. That way your batteries will last for a lot longer uh, and you won't ruin them. So good luck with that, Harry. Let me know how you go. Uh, there's lots of people who uh, can help us with advice and um, happy flying. See you later. Oh, what? <laughs> I didn't mean to do that.